Dreyage explained. What is Dreyage? With over 50 million TEU of container freight moving annually through U.S. ports, moving these containers to and from the ports, rail terminals, warehouses, and receivers is a huge challenge that requires specialized equipment, expertise, and carriers. Dreyage is just that. It's how containers move when not on a ship or train. Dreyage carriers move containers on the first and last miles of their routes. A quick history of Dreyage. Dreyage was historically viewed as short-haul transportation, originally via a horse-drawn cart. Transporting all manner of bulk cargo to and from river ports, seaports, and early rail terminals. Dreyage was relatively unknown by most until the rise of international cargo containerization in the late 1960s and early 1970s, when Dreyage took on a more pronounced meaning in the supply chain and role in moving containers to and from ports and rail terminals. Container Chassis Container chassis are the frame and set of wheels that the container attaches to for highway transport. Specially designed and strengthened for the on-off crane movements and with a locking mechanism to safely secure the container for a dray haul that can potentially be hundreds of miles over the road. Some chassis are designed for heavier weights and have three axles versus the more common two axle setup. These three axle chassis are mostly used with 20 foot containers. All chassis must be inspected before leaving a transload terminal or port to make sure that the tires are safe, the brakes work, lights work, and the general condition of the chassis is roadworthy. Containers The actual containers come in several sizes. The majority of international ocean containers which are moved via ship are either 20 or 40 feet long. The 20-foot containers are typically used for heavy, dense cargo where the cargo will weigh out before the additional volume is needed. This is often heavy bulk commodities, metals, or machinery. 40-foot containers are the most common type of container used internationally and are used for general merchandise. For domestic intermodal shipments, 53-foot containers are the most common, which closely match the interior volume of traditional over-the-road tractor trailers. In total, there are nearly 20 million shipping containers operated globally by shipping carriers. Electric drayage trucks. There's been a lot of talk about electric trucks, just as electric passenger cars like the numerous Tesla models have become so popular. For trucks and other heavy machinery, the issue is power density versus power output. Long haul trucks are expected to drive well over 500 miles daily, which puts pressure on batteries to maintain an appropriate balance of weight versus power capacity. The more power capacity a battery pack has, the heavier it is, thus limiting the amount of cargo the truck can carry due to federal regulations. Drayage is a unique opportunity for electric trucks due to the often limited range that dray trucks must drive. Particularly in the larger port facilities, a substantial portion of all drayage runs are under 150 miles, which is a great fit for early model electric trucks. Transloading 40-foot containers to 53-foot containers. At times, it can be more efficient for shippers to work with a logistics partner to transload the cargo from 40-foot international ocean containers into 53-foot domestic containers or into 53-foot dry vans. Since the cargo from five 40-foot containers can fit into three 53-foot containers, this means that inland transportation is now moving three loads versus five. The cost of moving 53-foot containers or dry vans versus 40-foot containers is non-existent or negligible, which presents considerable cost savings. Domestic intermodal shipping. Domestic intermodal leverages railroads and drayage carriers to move containers for door-to-door -door service. Railroads are utilized on the long haul portion of the trip, while drayage carriers are used on the first and last mile. The containers are transloaded in rail terminals, which facilitates the delivery of cargo to customers that do not have a railroad track directly going into their business. The 53-foot containers we mentioned above are used strictly for domestic freight. This type of cross-country container shipping is primarily used on long haul lanes over five to 600 miles as a cost savings measure and as a source of additional carrier capacity versus traditional over-the-road 53-foot dry van trucking. Drayage capacity and container shortages in 2020 and 2021. Traditionally, the capacity of containers and ships is somewhat evenly distributed on shipping lanes, and ships arriving are balanced against ships departing from ports. Due to supply chain and logistics disruptions during the pandemic, sailing stopped and then restarted all at once. This meant that ships have to wait on others to unload, causing major delays, which only compounds the problem further. Even as carriers have ordered more containers and are operating their ships on ever tighter schedules, there is no easy way to rebalance a system. With unprecedented shipping demand, prices for both international container shipping, port drage, and trucking in general are very high. 
Subscribe and like if you haven't already. More videos coming along very soon.